This is the download from Sounds Profitable. The most important news from this week and why it matters to people in the business of podcasting. I'm Manuela Bedoya. And I'm Shreya Sharma. This week, analysts predicts Programmatic will get podcasting to $6 billion in ad spend. The new iOS update takes care of Apple Core Media. Apple announces Virtual Neighborhood for Latin Heritage Month. Brandless studies are catching up with the times. And kids' content is booming for Paramount+. Plus. Let's get started. In last Friday's Hot Pod Insider, Ariel Shapiro covers B. Riley analyst Daniel Day's newest publication about the industry. His most attention-grabbing prediction, as the headline spoils, expects podcast ad spending to be up to $6 billion within four years. It'll be an uphill battle to get there. Shapiro points out the potential downsides of programmatic without the right data and infrastructure by recalling the infamous wild turkey incident. Back in May, Spotify accidentally ran an ad for Budget Whiskey on every podcast on the app simultaneously, leading to a social media firestorm as users posted screenshots of the most inappropriate examples of podcasts to pair with Wild Turkey. Day is of the opinion more detailed location data will be a game changer that avoids such issues in the future. Quoting the article, Small and mid-sized businesses really have almost entirely set out podcast advertising to date. Day told HotPod, these advances in geotargeting and programmatic allow mom and pops and local regional businesses to access this medium in a way that they couldn't before, absent reaching out to like some local sports or news podcast. Now they can target audiences listening to some big national podcasts, end quote. Day points to iHeartMedia putting significant investments into podcasting, as well as podcasting making up a larger portion of the company's revenue each year as examples of the growth he projects in action. Last Wednesday, Apple published an update blog detailing some of the new features coming with their iOS 16 update. The update comes with some creature comforts for the user, such as more prominent placement of the sleep timer button and better Apple Watch integration for podcasts. There's also a bit of housekeeping noted in case you missed the multiple emails over the past few weeks. Quote, Show and provider titles will continue to be displayed alongside show artwork on the library and search tabs. So make sure your show's metadata is up to date and that your artwork includes your show's title for the best experience. End quote. The most important feature of this update for the business side of podcasting isn't mentioned in the update blog, though. This update brings the change to Apple Core Media user agent that will shift how we view Apple's footprint in podcasting. As covered in our June 10th episode, this will lead to far less confusion as to what traffic is actually coming from Apple Podcasts. Those who didn't report ACM will no longer underestimate traffic from Apple, and those who labeled all traffic from ACM as Apple will get a more balanced look at just how much traffic is coming out of Apple. For those that are code savvy, we'll include a link in the show notes to the official Apple developer page for the updated user agent key. On the subject of Apple, this Monday, an email sent by Apple announced their plans for Latin Heritage Month, which runs from today through October 15th. The email says, Later this month, Apple will showcase the abundance of Latin-created content across genres, formats, and languages and spotlight many great creators. Apple Podcast has created a special destination titled El Vecindario, that honors the spaces where Latin communities come together and conversations originate, end quote. El Vecindario, or The Neighborhood in Spanish, will showcase Latin-created content covering multiple genres, formats, and languages. Last Friday, marketing Ruse Phoebe Bain used the release of the Association of National Advertisers' Organic Measurement Guidelines for Influencers as an excuse to discuss how brand lift studies have matured. Quote, Out of more than 1,000 marketing brew readers surveyed last month, about one-third said they think measurement for influencer marketing has evolved significantly over the past two years. End quote. A useful tool to track that rapid evolution is the brand lift study. Bain spends a good portion of the article explaining the basics. Two groups are asked questions about something with only one having experience with that thing. 
Any differing answers or familiarity expressed by the second group is quantified as, you guessed it, brand lift. Old school brand lift studies would ask simple questions regarding information retention or whether the audience wanted to buy the product in an ad. Modernized studies take into account the changing media landscape, especially with the popularity of influencers. VP of Marketing at creator management platform Grin, Ali Fuzzle, explains to Marketing Brew, quote, With an influencer marketing brand lift study, questions go a level deeper. Those questions might focus more on brand affinity or how consumers feel. For example, is the brand cool? Is it viral? Is it modern? End quote. These questions focus less on what consumers remember and more on a brand's overall or social appeal. In an influencer marketing brand lift study, he said, the questions focus on the full picture rather than just the ad itself. Quote, this measures the true depth of impact that creator marketing has. End quote. He said, why should the business of podcasting care? Podcasting is influencer marketing. In a world of pixel-based brand attribution and walled garden ad solutions, people are finding their options are missing the mark for influencer and podcaster alike. Brand live studies by companies like Edison Research, Signal Hill Insights, Veritonic, or Nielsen can help fill that gap. Last Thursday, Kelsey Sutton published a look at how kids' content is performing well at Paramount+. Plus. While Paramount Plus is separate from Paramount's podcasting ventures, the download has been covering the boom in kid-friendly podcasting since our March 18th episode. Paramount's experiences reaffirm that family and kid-oriented content drive engagement. Quoting the article, When it comes to streaming, parents will go without eating before disconnecting something that entertains their kids. Brian Robbins, president and CEO of Paramount Pictures and Nickelodeon, said Tuesday at the Bank of America Securities 2022 Media, Communications, and Entertainment Conference. Kids content is an amazing, amazing retention tool for us. End quote. The streaming platform has done well for itself since the CBS All Access rebrand. Currently, Paramount Plus reports 3 million paid subscribers. Quote, Kids programming on streaming can also help fill the audience void as linear viewing continues to drop off. If you take our linear share in the audience for kids that we've picked up on Paramount Plus, we actually have more audience and share of kids 2 to 11 years old than we've had in years when you combine them both, Robin said. As reported back in March, studies show the kids and family categories have grown 20% since last year, and there's reason to believe poor categorization of content is causing a lower number than the industry is actually experiencing. Kids' content is doing quite well, as any parent will tell you. Finally, it's time for our semi-regular roundup of articles we're calling Quick Hits. These are articles that didn't quite make the cut for today's episode, but are still worth including in your weekend reading. This week, class photos by Sky Pillsbury for The Squeeze. Pillsbury holds a mirror up to diversity on the business side of podcasting by compiling yearbook-style collages of the big podcasting company's leaders and known executives with deal-making power. A must-read. Introducing the Mullet Career Strategy, Creativity in Business by Steve Pratt. Pacific Content co-founder Steve Pratt announces his upcoming venture titled The Creativity Business, a strategy firm aimed at helping creatives learn better business and businesses learn better creativity. 17 Stats That Reveal the Power of Podcast Advertising and host read Ads by Connie Chen In addition to quoting Sounds Profitables after these messages study, Senior Manager of Content Management at Gumball, Connie Chen, brings a bundle of research to back up the efficacy of host read ads. And that was The Download, brought to you by Sounds Profitable. Today's episode was built using Spooler and hosted on Triton Digital's Omni Studio. Find out more at spooler.fm and omnistudio.com. I know we went through today's stories fast, so be sure to check out the links to every article mentioned right in your podcast listening app or on soundsprofitable.com slash the download. And thank you for sticking with us as we bring you the top stories you might have missed from the past week. I'm Manuela Bedoya. And I'm Shreya Sharma. Our producers are Brian Barletta, Gavin Gaddis, and Tom Webster. Special thanks to Omni Studio for hosting the download. And as always, thank you to you for joining us. Robot. Download complete.